You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. Welcome to Volatility Views, the premier program for volatility traders. Each week, we'll take a deep dive into the world of volatility with in-depth analysis, trading activity reviews, strategy breakdowns, cutting-edge education, and much more. We'll also bring you exclusive conversations with the traders, researchers, and asset managers who are reshaping the volatility landscape. If it involves volatility, then you'll find it on Volatility Views. Volatility Views is brought to you by MyAx, one of the fastest, most efficient trading platforms in the world. MyAx is proud to bring you Spikes Volatility products. Spikes options and futures are traded on the Spikes Volatility Index, Spike, offering pinpoint accuracy, radically faster dissemination, and a highly transparent settlement auction, all for ultra-low exchange fees. It's volatility reimagined. Learn more about spikes at myaxoptions.com slash spikes. Options and futures involve risk and are not suitable for all investors. The statements made are provided for informational purposes only and should not be relied on for financial or legal advice. And now, it's time to take a deep dive into the world of volatility. It's time for Volatility Views. All right, everybody, that music can mean but one thing. It is Friday, it is noon central, it is 1 p.m. Eastern, it is time once again for all of us to collectively view some volatility, and man, do we have some vol <laughs> to view today. My name is Mark Longo from TheOptionsInsider.com, as well as, of course, from the ever-scintillating Options Insider Radio Network. Glad to see so many of you have been enjoying the content throughout the week. Great stuff, great pro Q&A, great Options oddities coming up later this week. Education Wednesday, the option block, all sorts of goodness hitting you. You got the advisor's option this week as well. If you want to learn some interesting new wrinkles on ways to pay for your puts, that was a fascinating episode. A lot of stuff for you guys to sink your teeth into. Of course, if you want to go above and beyond, get the exclusive shows and everything else, theoptionsinsider.com slash secret club. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> and of course, however you listen live after the fact, keep hitting us up. Those questions, those comments, those insights, those pearls of wisdom. Keep voting in our polls. We do love to hear from all of you folks out there. Let's see who we're hearing from on the old program today. First, let's go back out to the Myax hot seat. It's been a little while, but we are joined once again by Mr. Tom Jerk, the Vice President of Proprietary Product Development over there at Myax. Tom, welcome back to the program, sir. Thank you, Mark. Happy to be here, and uh, you know, obviously, uh, an interesting time to be back on the show. We've had some decent uh, volatility, as you mentioned. Yeah, you picked a good one. No yeah, shortage exactly. of topics to discuss today. <laughs> I would think so. And also joining us once again from the volatility mecca, known as Texas, down the street from the Undertaker himself. We are joined by the greasiest of meatballs, Mr. Mark Sebastian from OptionPit.com. Mr. Sebastian, welcome back to the program. Hopefully, you finished up your morning session with Mr. Taker, sir. I did. I did. He already showed me a good good method for choke slamming someone that's heavy. So I'm excited about that. There you go. And uh, Mark, I got to ask Tom, what is going on with his Jerk Innovation Fund ETF? Uh, <laughs> it's down 6%, getting absolutely crushed. So, um, you know, what do you have to say for Jerk Innovation? <laughs> I don't have a lot of innovation right now, but uh, yeah, these uh, these these funds are uh, getting hit pretty good, huh? And the markets are getting hit pretty good as well. So let's dive right on into the volatility review. <laughs> 
It's time to break down the latest developments in the volatility trading world. It's time for the Volatility Review. everybody welcome to the vol review the portion of the show where we do just that we break down the week that was and indeed still is and oh there's a lot that is still going on <laughs> out there right now in the world of vol man what a week it was we were of course off last week for the thanksgiving day holiday here in the u.s listeners so we haven't gotten together here on the vol abuse program for two weeks now and man it's like the markets conspire the second we're away it's when they decide to really turn things up to 11 because of course last friday during our usual showtime man would have been would have been a great time to have a show last friday but say la vie the market guys did not smile upon us but we did see the beginning of this massive sell-off based around the new omicron variant out there massive sell-off two plus percent across most of the major indices last friday of course coming into the beginning of this week everyone was wondering will it continue the answer at least on monday was no it was rally ho everything back up over one percent and then we came in on Tuesday and we gave it all up again. And then on Wednesday, it looked like it was green again. We were rally ho. And then it was kind of just take the legs out and end up selling off. And then we've seen this kind of back and forth dance ever since rally. And now coming into today, it seemed like we were going to have some more green on the screen this morning as well. And now turning back to the red as the day has progressed. S&P off over 1% right now, about 1.1%. Dow the laggard only off about a third of a percent. NASDAQ off two and a quarter. Tech heavy NASDAQ getting clobbered out there. Of course, we talk about all these sell offs out there. SP still north of 4,500. Doesn't seem like that long ago we were talking about can it possibly get past 4,500 to the upside? So even with all this red and this tumult over the past week, still north of that level, which is interesting, but a lot to unpack on the ball side. Obviously, Vol is up, listeners. You don't need me to tell you that. How much it's up is, is the conversation of the day. Coming into showtime, we had spikes. Just ticking off the 32. Yes, 32. I said that 30 handle listeners. Spoiler alert. Nobody had a 30 handle in their crystal ball. And if they did, we all would have laughed at them. 3175 coming into showtime was where Spikes was hanging. It's at up 13 and three quarters points from our show two weeks ago. Big change out there. Vix Cash, when we kicked off the show, is at about 30 and three quarters. That puts it up about 13 and a quarter points from where it was this time last week. VVIX, a.k.a. the Vol of Vol, up a whopping 35 points to 148. And if that's not enough, our new friend, the Viking, a.k.a. V-Spikes, get this, listeners, was at 192 and a half when we kicked off the show. Again, that's the high. That's right off the highs that it's set for the year. And I use year in air quotes because we only really have data back to when it launched about a month and change ago. But still. It hit about 201 and a quarter back last Friday. So we're not that far from that level. So Vol of Vol is still frothy. If you're wondering what the low was, it was uh, back about a month ago on November 4th, 128.15. So we've had a nice oh, 70 odd point range close to it over the course of just this past month. So a lot of Vol of Vol on the screen. Let's go around the horn. Let's go the way we started here. Let's go out to the Mayax hot seat first. Mr. Tom. A lot to unpack out here. Of course, you got your old friend, the Viking, popping off there as well. A lot to unpack. What is lighting up your tape on this day of days when it comes to Vol, sir? Yeah, uh, well, so, well, not just this day, but, uh, you know, obviously things have picked up quite a bit. Um, you know, the, uh, I, I was, you know, quite, I always think about the holidays as, you know, we're, we're normally, we don't want to think of it as quiet times, relaxing. We should, you know, kind of, Everyone goes on vacation, takes a day off. But um, when there is news on a holiday, it does it does tend to uh, cause some some big moves in markets because you know just just from lack of liquidity, a lot of people are away off the desks. You know, uh, risk managers are, are are calling their traders rather than being next to them. So it's um, you know you get those. It, it always reminds me that you know you may want to always think about um, you know, and especially nowadays, the last few years, I think you you you, you almost want to price in more vol over a weekend or a holiday than less because. You know, I always think back of when um, China would make some crazy announcements. They were always over the weekend, never on a weekday. Um, and uh, yeah, so just you know, that was that was pretty interesting. Good, good, good wake up call for most people uh, digesting their turkey uh, turkey Thanksgiving dinners. 
Um, but uh, you know, for me, a lot of my focus the last couple of weeks has been on um, you know doing some stuff with V Spikes. Um, Mr. Uh, Simon Ho and myself are working on a little educational video we're going to be uh, putting putting online soon uh, for folks that want to learn more about it. And then um, you know we launched uh, MyX uh, in conjunction with MJX and uh, a partner, um, Advanced Fundamentals, recently launched. Uh, some BRICS uh, futures on commercial real estate. Uh, so now there's four sectors, hospitality, office, retail, and residential. Uh, so now your uh, you're listening you know, crew out there has um, some more product to, uh, to trade, used for hedging, scalping, you know, uh, positioning, whatever you like. But um, it's a you know, pretty, pretty interesting product, and I think it's going to take off. We're looking at listing options maybe in uh, Q1 of uh, you know, the coming year. Uh, so that's been, been pretty exciting. But um, yeah, the V spikes uh, really took off. Um, you know, there was just such a such a big reversal. I mean, everything was um, across the, everything I monitor was just kind of you know dampening down vol correlation, um, and then you get this this new shock and uh, you know quite a, quite a bit quite quite a you know quite a bit of a, a pop. Um, now on the macro index level, though, I mean, if you S and P's, yes, you had the two percent Friday, but you had the I think Dow this week there was the 1,000 point range, which is pretty significant. But uh, so there's a lot more intraday volatility than the actual, um, you know, looking at close to close historical vol. That, that there's much more intraday than to, you know to, that that's being you know not evidenced in the actual you know top line numbers you're looking at. So um, yeah, something to consider uh, when you're when you're analyzing vol is that uh, intraday moves when you look at that close to close. Uh, which in theory is how people are hedging the stuff, but uh, in, you know, most are not. But uh, you definitely want to consider those intraday moves into your uh, into your into your pricing. But based on where things are pricing now, it looks like you know we're we're looking for you know even more volatility going forward. Um, you had the huge gap in the in the vol curve overall, and then uh, you know went from a nice steep contango to uh, to this uh, almost I guess we're in backwardation now. So it's uh, it was a pretty pretty decent move. Uh, that's going to have a lot of impact on a lot of the vol ETNs, et cetera. Um, but yeah, I'll turn it over to Mark or to yourself, Mark Longo. You know, we have, uh, I mentioned your your buddy there, the V-Spikes, a.k.a. the Viking. You guys can find it for yourselves over there on the website, listeners. V-S-P-K-E is the symbol, maybe still hard. I'm still having a hard time finding out some other platforms in terms of propagation. You can get it over there. And also Simon has it on the T3 website. You can click through it there and see the chart. Now, I know some of the data I've seen on your site and others, Tom, pretty much only goes back about a month. So I'm trying to give our listeners more of a historic range. We've been talking VVIX forever. They know if it gets up to 150, that's a pretty frothy level for VVIX. In your opinion, 192 right now hit a high of 201 last week for the Viking. Where does that stand in the historical range of V-Spikes, sir? Oh, it's definitely uh, top levels, and uh, you know, and with w- with that in mind, I I just was glancing earlier at you know, my, I mean, one of my sneers is a you know three month implied vol uh, at the one year term, and uh, I just noticed you know this morning like there, almost every so many of the tickers I look at country ETFs, sector ETFs, whatever it might be, are above that ninety percentile in vol for the you know one year at the money vol over one year period. So it's pretty uh, pretty uh, everything's pretty high up. Everything is pretty high up indeed, unless you're looking at the S&P and the major indices. They're looking lower today. Let's go back out now to the land of Texas. Mr. Taker has been shown the door so we can switch from choke slams to volatility. Mr. Meatball, a whole heck of a lot of vol to unpack, sir. We, we were off for two weeks, so you can start anywhere you want, sir. What's been lighting up your take? You, you have to start with ARK ETFs. Um, they are in full in redemption hell right yes. now. Um, and that, if you want to know why the VIX is in backwardation, the answer is ARC. Um, ARC is their holdings are Tesla getting smoked. Why ARC is selling? Their holdings are Coinbase. Why getting smoked? Why ARC has to sell? Uh, what else do they own? Teladoc. They had a big position DocuSign that's down 40% today. Uh, Palantir, DraftKings, Unity Software. All these companies that that have good growth growth prospects, but they are in redemption hell. So what does that mean? That means they don't have enough cash to cover their redemption. So what do they do? They have to sell their stocks to pay off the redemptions. Well, what's the problem with that? Well, you feed into it creates a feedback loop where you're selling stocks that are that are losing to pay redemptions and it causes more redemptions. And so 
until if you until Arc can find a floor, all right, the volatility indices are going to have going to be going straight up. And when you look at the major indices, the one that should stick out to you are not the ones that are down, but the one that's barely down, and that's the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Uh, you know, it's barely down 100 points, right? Which for a $34,000 index is nothing. And why? Well, that is the opposite of ARC. Okay. Uh, we are 100% set up for ARC. Uh, you know, ARC could implode. I mean, absolutely implode over the next, over the coming days. I'm looking at ARC right now. It's 93 bucks. I'm still up over about almost 100% from two years ago. I'd be, I'm bailing. And that pollutes into all the names they own. You look at a stock like DraftKings, right? Was it a little over, a little frothy at 50? Yes. Does it probably belong, is 28, 27 getting too cheap? 100%. Well, why is this happening? For selling. So that is driving uh, VIX, that is driving the, in, the major indices. Uh, anything that touches Tesla, is is getting smoked. Teladoc and DocuSign are big in the Russell 2000, and the Russell 2000 is, that's causing the Russell 2000 get smoked. So, you know, yesterday, which was Thursday, we had a huge update. Arc was flat. Why they were selling, and today we're down, you know, two percent in the in the NDX, uh, a quarter of a percent in the Dow, and Arc has been down as much as 7%. So there is some real systemic risk to ARC ETFs absolutely imploding over the weekend. And that's what people are worried about. Now, here's the positive news. You're sitting there saying, wow, um, you know, what do I do? Well, I got to be honest, I like a lot of their holdings, but they're over, they're oversold and they're still forced to sell. When this Band-Aid finally gets ripped off, look for a lot of these names to absolutely explode higher. Um, so as Tom mentioned, VIX is now in backwardation. That is because there is some belief that there is some sort of systemic risk associated with ARC. We also have the Chinese delisting issues. Uh, China is making DDD list. That is the Uber of China. And now there are you know rumblings that uh, we could see Alab, you know, every single Chinese company that doesn't follow Gap uh, get delisted. And what are the implications there? Let's talk about Alibaba, which is the gold standard for Chinese companies. I think we can all agree that it's it's they make money, it's well run, it's a good company, right? Well, how about the fact that two weeks ago, a trader came in and bought a hundred thousand of the December. 20 puts, 40,000 of the 30s, 40,000 of the 40s. And then shortly thereafter, uh, maybe the same trader bought a big chunk of the Jan 100s as well. Volatility in BABA today is up 23 and a half points. Uh, it's down 7%. Implied volatility in BABA is now 80%. So you've got China. Uh, absolutely crushing uh, the market. And then you've got this ARC ETF that is a weight around the neck of tech names and the NDX. So where's that flight to safety? Uh, that flight to safety is in the Dow. Now, final comment I want to make. Uh, look at the amount of stock selling that tech CEOs have done over the last two weeks with their stocks right at the all-time high. Right, Musk dumps 10% of his holdings. Nadella from Microsoft dumps half of his Microsoft with it at an all-time high. Bezos is selling. Uh, you know, it, it is unbelievable um, that these stocks are so sky high. You got to wonder whether we're going to see uh, a little bit of a rotation, and you could see some strength maybe next week in materials and energy and mining and utilities, and we could see XLK. Uh, along with the, uh, you know, all that entire sector uh, get punched in the face. So uh, that's kind of the where I'm at on my analysis. I don't feels like we're getting near the end of this, but we could have 
a outside crazy ugly day if ARC implodes. Yeah, it certainly uh, would get a lot uglier out there. And yeah, we the day is still young, so a lot to unfold out there. But you're right, some of these names trading at levels they haven't seen in quite some time, like Palantir and others out there uh, as a result of this uh, mass unwinding. Go figure. You know, we have seen this movie before. It's not new to come in and just load up a fund, whatever fund it is, on whatever the hot names are of the day. And it works for a while until it doesn't. And it's like selling puts, right? It works till it doesn't. You have to have that plan for that day when it doesn't work. And at least so far, it doesn't seem like they had much of a plan for when for when they turn those machines off <laughs> over there. We'll see. Maybe maybe there is some uh, some secret plan afoot over there. But right now, not inspiring a lot of confidence. Let's see if the if the futures term structure is inspiring a lot of confidence. Go figure. It's all up crazy high across the board. Before I get out into all things futures, uh, let's really quickly run down. We had the numbers we talked about this week. They hit hot off the presses uh, yesterday on the option block for November. Spoiler alert, November was the busiest month in the history of options, listeners. I mean, I'm, it, we've said that a few times now. We're probably going to be saying it again. But Closing in on a billion contracts in a single month. I mean, if you had said that back when I walked into the SIBO, or even not that long ago, five or ten years ago, people would have laughed you out of the room. And now here we are facing close to a 950 or so million contracts on the tape in November, listeners. So we could even see by this year, if December continues apace, we could see a billion contracts in a month just this month. I mean, last year was a record year, 7.52 billion contracts. I already beat that by by the mid-October. We were already past that. By the end of October, it was about 8 billion. And we put up nearly a billion just in November. So you're talking about, if you put up a billion a month, you're talking on pace to threaten 12. I mean, these are these are insane numbers we're talking about here. So Mr. Tom, if you have anything to add on that front, if my axe has any uh, overall volume numbers to share, it is that time of month. And then B, uh, we're looking at uh, the futures. The futures are actually up over there at OCC as well. Volume was 5 million contracts up 42, nearly 43% from November of last year. So Tom, if you have any any volume numbers or any interesting developments on the spikes futures front as well you want to share with us, have at it, sir. Uh, yeah, <clears throat> excuse me. We haven't published our uh, you know our numbers yet, but um, just overall from you know what's what's visible in the uh, you know the marketplace, um, the uh, you know futures of for spikes roughly five thousand ADV in uh, the month of November. You know, if you think back a few months ago, that was uh, you know we were trading you know, a couple hundred a month, a uh, couple hundred of ADV. So um, you know over the six months we've seen a nice nice growth in the uh, in the volume. Um, as far as the uh, spikes options, uh, we've seen some uh, some new kind of flows coming in. Um, you know, a little more a little more activity, but uh, you know the volumes are still we still need we need still need some work there. But uh, it's uh, exciting to see. You know, we've um, since we put together that incentive program, uh, we've seen much tighter bid offer spreads in the options. Uh, the you know the markets look look decent, and uh, you know it's been a it's been a very um, easy conversation to have now with folks that you know we're trying to get involved in the product, and uh, you know we'll look forward to that to grow. But I, yeah, I can't make any comments on the overall um, MyAx volumes and options. All right, let's keep on rolling out into the land of VIX futures. Spoiler alert, they're up, listeners. <laughs> Since our last show, of course, November has rolled off the board. Uh, we got Dees holding that front spot now. Dees future up nearly nine points since our last show, about 870 or so listeners. So it's a, it's a heck of a move in that front portion of the curve. The Jan future is up nearly seven, about 6.6 points out there. So again, seeing some nice backwardation juice out there that was at least when we kicked off the show they're probably higher now uh mr meatball any thoughts sir on what we're seeing out there and this once again backward vix futures curve sir yeah like like i said we've got a, a backward curve uh it took a while but december finally got over january uh that's putting wind at the back of vxx uvxy all the volatility etns everyone everyone who likes to fade those things now's not the time um the vvix yeah VVIX and Viking are sky high. Uh, their option skew in both of them are through the roof. Uh, and yeah, this futures curve, uh, I'll be interested to see uh, what the next week looks like and how long this holds. But uh, when this futures curve goes backward, the market is scared. And uh, you can see that it is. I would also point out, 
and boy, we've got a lot to unpack today. Um, the HYG is flat on the day while TLT is up 1.7%. Uh, so we've got some softness in corporate bonds while they're chasing governments. That is another reason for VIX and spikes to go up. They're actually excellent hedges for uh, basis spread risk, which is another thing that you have to worry about. Let's move on out to the vol options because, spoiler alert, we got some trading out there these days. Spikes options, OI, looking uh, pretty similar to what it was on our last show. The big dog out there is still that DEES three-way. We have the DEES 2430 vertical versus the 21 puts. I'm pretty sure it was done to leaning towards the downside to try to finance that puts. I may wish they had it on the other way right now. <laughs> 1,600 of each of those up there across the board, kind of dominating the OI out there in Spikes land. Let's move on out to VIX land because it was already past a million contracts. It was at 1.01 million not a little while ago out there. So, yeah, VIX putting up some numbers out there today. It's been a while since we've seen that M handle back on VIX volume, but we're seeing it out there today. Uh, ADV also skyrocketing. It's up to 536,000 contracts. It's up 133,000 contracts since our last show two weeks ago. So obviously a lot of paper since that sell-off really sparked last week. In terms of, well, before we get to what's trading this week, in terms of what's the what the size positions are open out there in VIX land right now, let's find out. Let's do a top 10, shall we? Cost you 135,000 contracts to break into the top 10 out there in VIX land. So again, not a historic level by any means. If you're wondering, the overall top 10 right now, 60-40 puts over calls out there. So read into that what you will. Number 10, 135,000 for the Jan. 17 puts. Number 9, our first call in the top 10. A buck 37 of the Dece 40s, followed by also a buck 37 for number 8 of the Feb 65s. Oh, how we mocked those not too long ago. <laughs> number seven, 138,000 of the D16 puts. Number six, 143,000 of the D19 puts. Number five, a buck 48 of the D30 calls. Number four, 175,000 of the December 15 puts. Pretty much all D, except for that one Feb and one Jan out here. All D's all the time. Number four, buck 75 of the D15 puts. Number three, 181,000 of the December 18 puts. Number two, our final call. In the top 10, 211,000 of the D60s. Interesting. And number one with a, I guess you can call it about a 22, not a really a big bullet out there, 232,000 contracts of the Nov 17 puts. If I had asked you two weeks ago on our last show, which of those would you rather have? The D17 puts or the D60s? <laughs> I think I know which way all of you would have leaned. And uh, now, what a, what a difference two weeks makes. <laughs> Let's get on out to the paper that is lighting it up out there this week. You might have think we would have hit a million a couple of times this week. Actually, we did not. We flirted with it on Wednesday. But today is the only day to surpass 1 million contracts. Like I said, 1.01 million contracts on the tape, listeners. And no signs of stopping anytime soon. If Kathy and her ilk keep redeeming, <laughs> we may see more, more selling afoot here. But let's go out. What is the most active contract today? Well... I was just joking about these, but they are lighting it up today to the tune of 129,000. Yeah, it's the D60s. I'm going to have to dive in there and see if they're taking these bad boys off. I hope that they they bought these and they're taking them off for a ton of profit right now and laughing all the way to the bank. Oh, it's like someone bought these through the offer for 90 cents, 67,000 times. Oh, it looks like they may be rolling the 70s. No, 60, 60, 70? Rolling to the 70s and also the D's 20 puts. Like a crazy three ways going up today because number two are the D's 20 puts, 91,000 of those on the tape. And number three, also 90,000 of the D's 17 puts. Wow. So that's interesting. And then number four, we have the D 70 calls, 72,000 of those. And number five, we have, where are we here? 70. Number five, we got 57,000 of the D's 65. So again, all strikes that we mocked are now. Very much in play right now, listeners. That's just shows you the kind of day we're having out there. Yesterday, pretty active. Not quite as active as today, 
804,000 contracts on the tape. The big dog yesterday with the Dees, 22 puts, 104,000 of those bad boys going up, followed by 43,000 for number two of the Dees, 18 puts. Number three, 30,000 of the Dees, 19 puts. Number four, 24,000 of the Dees, 23 puts. And rounding out a put-heavy day, 18,000 for number five of the Jan, 20 puts. Wednesday, almost a million, 987,000 contracts on the tape. The big dog then, also the Dees, 22 puts, 104,000 of those bad boys going up again. Followed by number two, we've got, uh, looks like we got some repeats here. So I'm going to try to fix this one here while we keep on moving to uh, Tuesday here. Let's go out to Tuesday. 796,000 was the big day on Tuesday. 92,000 was the big dog on Tuesday with 26 calls leading the dance. Followed by number two, 61,000 of the Dece 18 puts. Number three, 47,000 of the Dece 20 puts. Number four, 35,000 of the Dece 25 calls. And rounding out the top five on Tuesday. 30,000 of the D's 30 calls. Monday, also pretty heavy, 705,000 contracts. The most active contract on Monday was 77,000 of the D's 26 calls, followed by 71,000 of the D's 19 puts. Number three, D65 is 54,000. Number four, 39,000 of the D's 17 puts. And rounding out the top five on Monday, remember that was rally day, uh, 24,000 of the D's 16 puts. So a lot to unpack. Uh, Mr. Meatball has been just a tsunami of paper out here this week while I go fix these numbers for Wednesday. Uh, what's catching your eye out there? And do you have any insight into what's going up today here with this 60, 70 versus the 20 and 17 puts? Sir? Yeah. So those were actually two separate trades. Um, the 60, 70, it was a 60, 70 call spread. You're right. It was close and roll. They sold the 60 calls, bought the 70 calls, uh, collected 30 cents on the trade. Um, the 17 puts are one of the most active and open strikes it appears a, a trader is closing the 17 puts at six cents and opening the 20 puts for 31 trying to move that exposure uh looking for a fade here uh, we've also we've seen that 60 70 go up a bunch we've also seen like the 40 70 go up in jan that's gone up that went up twelve thousand times saw a 40 45 call spread which is cute but they did that um but the activity has been very call heavy today, uh, which is unusual for uh, of the last few weeks and months. But yeah, um, the other thing that I noticed was uh, yesterday, yesterday uh, over 100,000 of the 22 puts were purchased. Uh, that was a really active strike. They were done in differing amounts and different and at different speeds, but just huge amounts of um the 22 puts went up as well. Those kind of make some sense to me, given that, you know, if the VIX does pull back over the next two weeks, a sub 20, those 22 pay really, really nicely. So that that was the other major trade that I saw this week. Yeah, I can certainly get behind those as well. Let's do a quick catch up here. We got the right numbers in here now for Wednesday. Like I said, Wednesday was the second most active day of the week, 987,000 contracts on the tape, even though the most active was Surprisingly light, only 48,000 of the D30 calls, followed by number two, 39,000 of the D17 puts. Number three, 37,000, about 500 of the D32 halves. Number four, back to the D65, 34,000 of those, and rounding out the top five on Wednesday. The D40s, 26,000 contracts on the tape out there. Let's keep on rolling out there to products that, again, you know it takes a lot to lift these bad boys, so you know something's afoot. When they are in rally ho mode and VXX is in rally ho mode again this week. Coming into showtime is at about a 28, a little bit north of that now, about 28.15 or so. It puts it up a little over seven points from where it was on our last show two weeks ago, listeners. So that, that's, that takes a lot to move it that much. Uh, we're seeing uh, the ADB also ticking up, kind of following along with what we're seeing out there in VIX land. Just more paper in the ball space across the board. Over the last couple of weeks, ADB is now 269,000 contracts. That's nothing to sneeze at. That's up 68,000. It was barely over 200,000 on our last show. And today, already beaten that, 308,000. So that ADB is going up again. In terms of the top positions, let's break it down out here in the top 10 in VXX. Tosh just 16, almost 17,000 to break into the top 10. I'll get you to the Jan 21 calls. By the way, it is 70-30 puts over calls in the top 10 here. In VXX, 16,900 to be precise for number 10 of the Jan 21s. Number nine, 18,000 of our only VXX pre-split adjusted. Man, it seems like a lifetime ago that these things reverse split, but 
We still have some of these legacy positions in the top 10 listeners. And here we have one here, the Jan 12 puts, <laughs> old school Jan, even though you can make an argument for the, the non VXX one 12 puts at this point as well. <laughs> 18,000 of those bad boys. Number eight, 19,700 of the Dece 44 calls. These are weeklies expiring on the third. Interesting. Number seven, 20,000 of the Jan 21 puts. Number six, 22,000 of the Dece 21 puts. Number five, 22,600 of the Dece 18 puts. Number four, 23,000 of the Jan 20 puts. Kind of all puts all the time, listeners. Number three, 37,000 of the Dece 19 puts. Number two, 39,000 of our final call in the top 10, the Dece 30s. And uh, we're looking like we're threatening those five. Who would have thought that 30 strike was going to come into play? But 28, we're threatening it. And number one out there today, the D's 20 puts 43,000, almost 44,000. Not today, overall, I should say, in the top 10, the big position out there. D's 20 puts. Again, if I had asked you last show, which of those would you rather have, the D's 20 puts or the D's 30 calls and VXX? I know which way you would have been leaning because it would have been obvious. And yet here we are in a very different regime two weeks later here. Uh, in terms of what's lighting it up today, it's all stuff expiring today, actually. A lot of it. The Deese expiring today. 27 puts. Doing nearly 20, excuse me, 17,000 of those. Followed by number two, the 29 calls also going out today with about 15,000. So we're kind of dancing right between those two right now at 28. Which one will win? Will either of them win? Will they both expire worthless? We shall find out. Number three, we got the Jan 22 puts with about 11,000 contracts. Number four, 8,700 of back to the Deese expiring today. 28 puts. And 8,200 of the 28 calls. So 28 strike, 27 puts, and 29 calls all lighting it up today, which, again, no big surprise. But we're seeing a lot of paper out there. Mr. Meatball takes a lot to move the needle this much in VXX, but we're seeing it out there. Up seven points. What's been lighting up your tape, your tape, I should say, in the tape of your crazies out there, sir, as this thing has been moving? Yeah, I mean, it's made it's made a really nice move. Uh, both, the ET, both the major ETFs have. Uh, and... Uh, you know, when we see the VIX go into backwardation, you can expect this thing to continue to uh, you can expect this thing to continue to have some some speculation on maybe breaking back back out above 30. Uh, you know, who knows uh, how how high this thing could go uh, if especially like I said, if we do get some sort of cataclysmic event, um, VXX could absolutely blow higher. Um Today, looking at you know the trades that have gone up in VXX, obviously a ton of activity on things expiring today. Um, I am seeing a 2722 put spread trader floating around in there. So uh, doing it on a ratio. So they bought the 27 puts twice and uh, once and sold the 22 puts twice on a one by two ratio. So that is uh, just something interesting to be uh, to be on top of. We've seen that trade go up a few times. Plays on VXX uh, renormalizing between now and January. Yeah, it's interesting. You're right. We are in backwardation town. Usually doesn't last that long, but we are in rare territory right now. It could last longer than perhaps expected, especially if we see some sort of apocalyptic events unfolding over the weekend out there. And that, of course, wreaks havoc with these ETPs like VXX and UVXY. Speaking of UVXY, let's get out there. That's the one that usually just feels the downside the most, listeners. So it takes really a Herculean effort to make this thing rally. So when it's up 7.65 points, you know something crazy is afoot out there. It's coming at the showtime. UVXY was at about a 23 and a half listeners. So quite the move. I said up over seven and a half handles. From our last show, the ADV also skyrocketing up to 224,000 contracts. That's up about 32,000 contracts from our last show. And today, looks like it's threatening it again. It's, it's uh, about, about 189,000 contracts on the tape out there. In terms of what's, what's leading the dance out here in UVXY, again, they're smaller positions. So we'll just do a top five. If you want to know the top 10, the top 10 is still mostly puts. It's 60-40 puts over calls. So it's not perhaps quite as put heavy as you might expect. Again, maybe perhaps reflecting a bit of a uh, sea change going on out there right now in UVXY. These things are all rallying. You know, it takes a lot for people to buy calls in UVXY, but yet we've got 60-40 puts leading the dance. So it's almost 50-50 out there right now in UVXY, which again, is not a very frequent occurrence. 
Let's do again. Let's just do a top five really quickly. In the top five, we actually have most of our calls are in the top five, which is interesting. We've got the Jan 75s. Yes, 75s, 9,000 of those. I do believe this is our friend who liked to sell himself a little bit of upside out there. Uh, he may, that may be coming home to roost for him, even though he's got a long way to go between <laughs> 23 and 75. But still, he's probably feeling a little bit of pain in these this week. Uh, number four, 9,300 of the March 60s. Again, we talked about someone out there really finding a home for selling a lot of upside out there in UBXY. Number three, 9,700 of the Dece expiring today, 18 puts. This is the only contract going out today here in the top five. Number two, we got 10K of the Dece 15 puts expiring on the regular monthly expiration. And number one, we have the monthly Dece 70s as well, the 11,100. So of the top five, Three of them are these really outlandish call strikes <laughs> out here. So uh, interesting stuff afoot. In terms of what's trading out there today, we got some action to the tune of, let's see, where are we? There we go. Uh, we got, yeah, number one today. It's, it's pretty much, it's all expiring today, actually, all December 3rd contracts. We got the 22 calls, number one with 8,600. Number two, we got about 7,800 of the Dece. Expiring today, 25 calls. Number three, 6,700 of the 23 calls. Number four, 6,400 of the 20 puts. And rounding out the top five today, 6,200 of the 21 calls. So just a gamut of contracts around the 23 half level where we found ourselves at the start of this segment. Mr. Meatball, you know what it takes to lift UBXY. And we've seen quite the lift of it over the course of the past couple of weeks. What's been lighting up your tape and the tapes of your crazies in UBXY, sir? Yeah, same thing. This thing has seen an explosion in volume. Weekly option volume is through the roof in UBXY. Lots of trading, lots of speculating on it going up and down. Um, it, it has been absolutely flying. It's performing the way you'd expect. Uh, it's up one and a half times VXX, as you'd expect. We did see, interesting, we saw some uh, put sellers for the options expiring today on the open. Uh, that was the biggest trade. Uh, we got somebody selling the 60 calls uh, about a thousand times. The March 60 calls went up several thousand times at seven bucks. So I'll be interested to see what those look like. And uh, that's been the biggest trades of the day. But this thing is, again, moving around. It's flying around. And, you know, you can expect this thing to potentially, uh, you know, keep going. And the show's going to keep on going, listeners. Let's keep on rolling out there to the land of some single name. Vol, we do have a lot of new reports for you over there on the website. You know where to go, theoptionsinsider.com. Click on the options, news, and articles tab. Once you're there, you can see the earnings move, earnings move results, earnings season, and now the newly minted earnings trades reports. You guys get four cutting-edge reports in your hot little hands completely for free, uh, courtesy of our friends over there in Orat's land. Matt just joined me on the advisor's option earlier this week to break down all this stuff. You want to learn about buying calendars, selling calendars, buying straddles, selling straddles during earnings season, when it works, when it doesn't, as well as how these names have performed in the past, how they're performing right now, how the season is shaping up. You can get all that stuff over there. Again, it's free. It's crazy how much data you're getting for free listeners over here. And let's look really quickly at some of the reports that just broke here for this week. Uh, we had Kroger popping off yesterday before the bell. They were at, again, this is all immediately after their earnings. Obviously, it's going to change if you held it through today, listeners. But in the immediate blush after earnings here, we saw the uh, Kroger was priced. They were at 40 and a quarter. They were pricing in about 7%, and they ended up delivering, oh, about 10.5%. And now they've kind of given it back up, actually, since uh, since then. So they're kind of back down to closer to that 7% range again after today's sell-off. So again, frame of reference is important here. If you hold these contracts longer, you'll have a different outcome. But these reports are kind of just showing you really they want to focus on just the earnings-related move, not all the other noise. Uh, Snowflake, same deal. They were popping off on the first after the bell. They were at 311. Again, Snowflake was kind of the hot name for, oh, a hot month or two out there. It was one of these hot IPOs. They had to have options on it. Everybody was all fired up about it. And let's see. They were pricing in about 9%, and they delivered about 11%. So nice little outperformance for them. And looks like they've given some of that back now. They're up to about up about looks like about nine and a half or about ten percent or so. That they're at three forty four and a half as of this report. They're at three forty two and about a half or so right now. So giving up some of that as you might expect, given the sell off. But they did outperform. They did get some love back. So maybe 
Maybe some folks are going to be hot again on Snowflake options as a result. A five below going out to the cheapy land. This has been an interesting sector to watch. Names, some of the dollar store names are actually going to buck and a quarter stores now. So five below was an interesting one to watch. They were pricing in, get this listeners, 8.6%. So they were they were expecting something after I think some of the dollar store releases. And they ended up delivering a whole heck of a lot of nothing. They delivered 2.3%. Let's see how they're holding out right now, listeners. Let's go to five below. Yeah, they were at 193.62. As of this report, they're at 193.88 right now. So they've pretty much uh, delivered a whole heck of a lot of nothing on this one. Let's go out a little bit. Let's look ahead to next week. We still have some names popping off, listeners. Well, we've got Dave and Buster's play. Who's out there playing right now? I guess we'll find out. They were pricing in uh, 30. They are pricing, I should say. They're at 30.14. They're pricing in about three and a quarter. In the past, they've moved to buck 83. So they're they're pricing in a lot of extra juice. And in previous pandemic cycles, that's been a recipe for disaster. These days, maybe not so much. You'll see what I mean in a second. Costco on the ninth, they are at 529.84 as of this report. They're pricing in almost 20 bucks exactly. In the past, they've moved 12. Wow, that's that's a heck of a lot of extra juice in Costco. And you can go through all these reports for yourselves, listeners, and find out other names that you follow, how much they're pricing in versus what they performed in the past. A whole bunch of other stuff. If you also look at the earnings season report, you will see we are holding firm at 99%. So it's pretty much a break-even quarter, a break-even cycle, which we have not seen really since the start of the pandemic. And there have been multiple weeks that outperformed. We saw week four, 114%. Week six, the one we're kind of just finishing up here, 119%. Uh, We had week five at 99%. Week one at 98%. So we were flirting with actually making money on the season. But again, this is... Far and away, the best season we've seen since the pandemic began. Probably why we're starting to see names price in a little bit more vol these days, which is kind of interesting. If you want to see what names are pricing in going forward and what they have on the docket, all sorts of other fun stuff, theoptionsinsider.com is the place to go. Meanwhile, we get out, We got to get on out of here, I should say, and get on into the volatility voicemail. It's time to share your thoughts and opinions with your fellow volatility traders. It's time to check the volatility voicemail. Make your voice heard by dialing 779-669-4VOL. Posting a comment on the optionsinsider.com, sending an email to questions at the optionsinsider.com, or posting your questions to twitter.com slash options or facebook.com slash the options insider. All right, listeners, let's get to the vol voicemail here. Um, yeah, we asked the question at the beginning of this week. We knew it would be a little bit contentious, a little bit fun. Didn't know quite how contentious it would be. We asked you on Monday, is this recent surge of vol, does it have legs or is it a flash in the pan? What do you think? You think VIX will close above or below 20 on Friday? Well, I think we have our answer. <laughs> it's not going to close below 20 today unless all the vol comes out, listeners. But unless they cure all of or they cure all of COVID today, yeah, we could be below 20 by the end of the day. But right now, our audience, the poll just expired, and our audience was leaning heavily the other way. 61.2% of you said below 20, and 38.8% of you said above 20. Obviously, it was heavily biased in the early frame that we posted that on Monday when, obviously, the market was in rally ho mode. VIX was coming off. seemed like it was going to threaten the 20 handle. So you can see why some folks might think that. But uh, intriguing stuff out here. I think what we're going to do, listeners, because it's kind of obvious what we're going to have on our hands this week. Well, let's try that one again. Let, let's punt and do it again next week because I'm even more curious about what you folks think for next week. A lot of you have been saying, hey, if you had extended it, we would have changed our, you know, our, our viewpoint. We thought it was below 20. Now we've changed it. We had Russell Dr. Vix on our show yesterday. He said he thought below 20 beginning of the week. He's obviously changed his mind now as well. So a lot of you have as well. So we're going to give you another tilt at the windmill. If it's not live now, it's going to be live on our on our Twitter momentarily, listeners, over there at Options. Get over there for an early preview of next week's question of the week, which is going to be, do you think VIX is going to close above 20 next week? Yes or no? Uh, get out there. You can make your voice heard right now. What do you guys think? Well, actually, you know, I can't ask you that because we have our crystal ball coming up in a little bit as well. So maybe instead we'll just dive to that because we have a lot to unpack in there next let's head on into the crystal ball it's time to peer into the future 
and reveal what the volatility gods hold in store. It's time to look into the Crystal Ball. All right, everybody, welcome to the most difficult, the most dangerous portion of the show. If you need evidence as to why, just witness what's going on in the markets today. Because the last show two weeks ago, again, it's a, it's a difficult challenge to try to prognosticate vol two weeks into the future, let alone one. But the Rock Lobster and I ably attempted it. And I was at a 17 and a quarter. I was the most lofty of the bunch. The Rock Lobster was at about a 1651. I thought I was looking a little bit lofty, but uh, yeah, no dice out there, listeners. Uh, we are well north <laughs> of both of those. No one had a 30 handle. Spoiler alert out there as we're at a little bit north of 32 in pretty much both of them right now. Actually, Spikes is getting even higher. Spikes is 33, a little bit north of 33. So, yeah, no one had a 30 handle listener. So no winner, winner, chicken dinner. I'm looking at some of your listener ones. Some of you were close. We had JJ at about a 22. So you were only about 10 to 11 handles off JJ. You were closer than the Rock Lobster and I. Most everybody else looks like they had a handle in the teens. Uh, we got our jokesters in the chat. They said they were at 1398, but they had a typo. They really meant 3198. So, yeah, if, if you had that typo, then, yes, you are the winner out there. Let's see. Yeah, a lot of people were 16s, 14, and like 1396. That was MU. So a lot of people were fading ball as well. Unfortunately, no winner, winner, chicken dinner, which means we can wipe the slate clean. Let's pretend this week never happened, listeners. <laughs> Instead, we all get a fresh chance to go out there. So let's go around the horn. Let's start with Mr. Tom. Uh, first off, Mr. Tom, I said we're reposting our question of the week. So it's kind of related to your vol prognostication, but... What is your answer in our question of the week for next week? You think we'll be below 20 or above 20 by the end of the day on Friday? And as a corollary to that, what is your vol prognostication, sir? Um, all right. So what do we got? I, my, my guess would be uh, we'd be above 20, but I think we're going to be below current levels. We might see higher first, but uh, I'd say we close next, next week's showtime around 20. 26. I'm, and I'm lucky if, you, if I'll be within five handles in this environment. <laughs> yeah, our usual goalposts of a tenth of a point seems pretty restrictive in yeah. this environment, does it not? <laughs> Welcome to our world throughout the entirety of the pandemic, sir. We, we maintained that high degree of accuracy demand despite the madness going on in the world around us. Uh, Mr. Mr. Meatball, you were not on the show last time, so you, even though you could take the loss of the Rock Lobster, I won't hold it against you. I will allow you to go next, sir. What is your vote in our poll? And then B, where are you going related to that in your crystal ball, sir? I mean, right now we're literally watching VIX just absolutely blow higher. Um, and even as the markets are just kind of sitting here, vol's going up and up and up. So um, we've got, a, we've got a, a potential panic open on Monday. And then I think we could ease off there. But I actually think we could end up right about where we are. What did, what did Tom guess? Tom guessed... Uh, 26. 26? Hmm. Friday, huh? You were 33 now. Oh. Let's go crazy. Uh, let's say 41. Hmm. Going the other end of the spectrum entirely. 41, says the meatball. So we already have a 15-point range here, listeners. Ew, wow. <laughs> Let's go on out some of the listeners really quickly. We're getting uh, 2408 uh, from Mr. Unlimited. Options Queen's going 35, so she's going on the upside with you, saying COVID numbers will go up more due to Thanksgiving travel, and people will be stressed about it. Hmm. Currently, certainly... Certainly could be seeing that. Uh, others saying, I do see more people masking up everywhere I go. The jobs number was pretty bad today. Uh, debating about that. Let's see. So numbers all over the place out there in the listener chat. If you have your, your question of the week, listeners, hit us up. By the way, if you hit a bullseye in this environment, you're definitely getting a prize because these are challenging times, to say the least. You know, I was feeling, I was feeling modest. I was feeling less vol this coming week as well. Of course, we could... Again, easily see the madness that the meatball has ensued here as well. I, I have a hard time putting a 30 handle in my mouth. So I'm going to say, I'm going to say, huh, I'm going to say, 
twenty. I'm gonna say it's twenty seven. Thirty three. Now, 27, 25. I like that a little bit. There you go. 27 and a quarter for me, Tom, 26, and the meatball at a apocalyptic 41. What's your guess? Hit us up. Let us know. If you get it within our acceptable range, could be a present for you under the tree. All right, everybody. That music means it is time once again. For us to draw to a close, the Vol viewing. I know, I know, we could keep going for hours on this show. There's a lot of Vol to discuss, and we've kind of just scratched the surface. It is only a one-hour show, listeners. If you want to get into a more single-name Vol, Treasury Vol, everything else under the sun, Commodity Vol, which you do touch on on, on Twifo, thankfully. It had to be a two- or three-hour show. <laughs> but before we go, let's go back around the horn. Mr. Tom, if folks are intrigued, they want to learn more about Spikes, or about everyone's favorite, the Viking, a.k.a. V-Spikes, or the Futures, or anything else you guys have cooking. Where should they go? What should they do, sir? Well, the best spot for all that information is uh, myxoptions.com slash spikes. You can find it all in there. Or reach out to me directly. I can help out. And uh, I have one question real quick for Mr. Meatball when he comes up. Is he going to be sleeping well this weekend, or is he going to be up nervous all weekend? Uh, I'll be fine. I'll be fine. <laughs> He's I've blasting away at all his spy puts all day. He's gonna be chomping I've at been, them at his nails. <laughs> I've been I've been waiting on something like this for a while, kind of just playing small, waiting for something like this, so that I can go in with both hands when we actually do bottom out. And if I like I said, if uh, nice. if our QTF doesn't implode, I got uh, I got a, a a whole fund of leverage to step in and, and start buying. And I'm I'm excited about it. I got to be honest. Nice. Good luck. Thank you. Sure. I appreciate the, the well wishing. <laughs> At least one of us here wishes you well, sir. But uh, <laughs> in addition to all your scooping, uh, what do you, if folks want to hit you up, they want to ask you about those levels for yourselves, or maybe they want to check out the Gamdar. Where should they go? What should they do? Yeah, you know what? I'm writing on VIX and spikes and volatility every single freaking day. Go to optionpit.com. Read. It's the best place to find great written content. Uh, as we all know, this is the best place to find amazing trading and options podcasts. But if you care about VIX and you want to learn more and you want to become a better VIX trader, then you should be reading the VIX Edge every single day. There you go. Check it out. Optionpit.com. we got more prognostications coming in here. Frank's at a 28, so he's trying to scumbag me. Luizzi, 2670. What are you guys doing to me? You're just coming all over me here, carping me left and right here. Okay, fine. I'll, I'll let you guys have your spots here. I like our listeners, even if they are precariously close to my level. Hey, I get it. I get it. You see genius. You want to get around it. I understand. I understand. I understand the impulse. <laughs> send, send in your guesses, listeners. You know where to find us. Vote in our question of the week. You think we'll be below 20 this time next week? Only one way to know. At options is the place to go. We got to get on out of here. But don't worry. If you're one of our secret club friends, we got more in store. I'll be back in exactly an hour. Uh, the Rock Lost has been hitting me up like crazy all day long with ideas. He's really fired up about this show. Is he going to bail on EDU? Let's find out. Uh, coming up in about an hour here, I think the Chinese thing has spooked him a little bit. Uh, we'll get all of that and a whole bunch of more weird, wild, wonderful activity over there on Options Oddities. If you're not part of that club, you know where to go. Theoptionsinsider.com slash secret club. It's a fun place. Check it out. And we'll check you guys out next week. Another episode of Volatility Views. Volatility Views is brought to you by Myax, one of the fastest, most efficient trading platforms in the world. Myax is proud to bring you Spikes Volatility products. Spikes options and futures are traded on the Spikes Volatility Index, Spike, offering pinpoint accuracy, radically faster dissemination, and a highly transparent settlement auction, all for ultra-low exchange fees. It's volatility reimagined. Learn more about spikes at myaxoptions.com slash spikes. Options and futures involve risk and are not suitable for all investors. The statements made are provided for informational purposes only and should not be relied on for financial or legal advice.
You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com.